when it comes to concealed carry, it's something that needs to be very personal. It's something that you have every day. And there are a few things that I like to add to my concealed carry. I don't like to do a whole lot because I don't want it to be too much. I have to live with it. I mean, it's on me, you know, while I'm awake. So we're gonna add some things to this Glock 29. This is the 10 millimeter compact. This really would apply to any firearm that I would conceal carry, but specifically to the Glock. Got for magazine, make sure the gun is unloaded. Now on the Glock 29, we've got a number of different changes. This is pretty much stock. Uh, one thing that I have done and actually, in preparation for this video, uh, I went ahead and got a Wheaton Arms flat face trigger. These are the best for Glock, hands down, and uh, WheatonArms.com, Robbie makes these, and they're just excellent. Uh, but he had to find to make sure he had the right trigger bar, so he took it with him, and I went ahead and installed it. So otherwise, I would just have the stock trigger. And of course, we have our magazines. Uh, on this pistol, we have just your stock sights. And uh, we'll show you a few things we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about optics. We're gonna talk about flashlights or lights on your weapon as well. Now here are all the parts laid out of some things we're gonna be doing some changes with. We'll go through each one. And also this isn't the end all, but honestly, there's only a few things that I like to do to my concealed carry piece. I like it as is. I don't really change out a lot of things like the barrel or the guide rods, things like that. Uh, I like to keep it pretty much stock. Really, the only thing as far as internally is the trigger. And to be honest, I probably wouldn't change out the trigger if it wasn't that I was just really hooked on the flat face triggers. Now guys, one of the big things I like are night sights for my self-defense gun. Uh, these are from Night Vision. Uh, they've been around for a few years. Actually, the parent company is Kamanga, which makes the lensatic compasses for the U.S. military, or the, at least the tritium inserts. And this is Swiss tritium. It is super bright. Uh, this is my favorite, hands down. In fact, I used to do some things with these guys, but I just order these sights directly off the website because I really like these sights. Now with the magazines, we're putting a little bit of a grip extension. Uh, this is a concealed carry piece and I don't want to get it too long. This just replaces the base plate and gives you a little bit of a finger rest. I do have one of the plus two base plates and uh, this definitely gives you a couple of extra rounds probably want to keep that one in my back pocket and keep this one on the pistol. Now we also have one of the magazine adapters from X-Grip and this goes on your full size Model 20 magazine. Uh, you know it holds 15 plus one. I can put this in and it doesn't over insert into the mag well. Then also from Pierce Grip I do have one of the grip frame inserts. Uh, I like to have those. It just kind of completes the back side of the firearm. Uh, one thing though as far as Glocks go is this actually allows for you to get your hand up here and strip the magazine if you have a malfunction. That's one thing about putting one of these grip plugs in here is it does keep you from being able to get your thumb up there and pull this out if you need to. We're going to be adding one of the brass stacker trapezoid grip. It's the slide lock for the Glock. And this is just a little bit extended and man it makes a huge difference when t breaking down your firearm. Uh, one of the things especially about this Glock 29 is it is really close to the frame. And it's, it's very difficult. In fact, my other Glocks, I don't have as much trouble with. In fact, I really don't have a lot of trouble. But I like that little bit of an extension where it helps me just to pull this down. And again, with this Model 29, it just seemed to be uh, much more difficult to pull the slide off. Now, as far as holsters go, um, I'm really a big fan of the Stealth Gear holsters and uh, the Vent Core. I love it. They're super comfortable. And whether you're wearing this appendix or even at three or four o'clock, I mean, it really makes it nice. And of course, that's for right-handed. Seven or eight o'clock for left-handed guys. These are really good quality holsters. And guys, there's a bazillion choices. This is just something that I've been doing a lot with lately. And I really like them. Uh, if I'm going to go with leather, I typically go with Jackson Leatherwork holsters. Uh, John Jackson does a fantastic job with leather. Now Glock specific, I would definitely recommend having some kind of magazine tool uh, to take off your base plate. This is a really easy way to pull them off. I'm, I've done it with a punch for years, but this seems to be a little bit better and it's not as abusive onto your magazines. Now guys, the setup is complete. Uh, we have our night vision sights. Guys, I'm telling you, these sights are excellent. I love the white outline with the orange in the front, but there's a lot of different options you can choose from. So this makes it great to shoot during the day, but with the tritium, it gives it a really bright light at night. And I like to be able to see my sights. Uh, typically in self-defense situations, a lot of times you're just pointing. With the optics cuts and all that kind of stuff, that adds a whole nother dimension. 
but for what I'll typically like to carry, this is about the way I like it. The Wheaton Arms Trigger, obviously, uh, flat face. This is the Elite Pro. Guys, it is an excellent trigger. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a second because I just want to show it off. Uh, also, uh, we have our Trapezoid Slide Lock. And guys, I'll tell you, especially with the 29. Now, I don't usually have problems with some of the others, uh, my Glock 19, my 43X. But with the 19, it's really tough to get that. This gives you just a little bit, and it doesn't come past this little area right here. But it gives you enough to where you can pull that down. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it. The gun is unloaded. Um, pull the trigger, bring it back. It just gives you that just enough to pick it up. And again, I like to keep everything pretty much stock. Uh, this is just what I like to do, you know, keeping it where the factory set it and how it was designed for that. But with the trigger, I really like to have that extra capability, and I've been really spoiled. I like to keep my slide stop minimal, though. I mean, you can add a little bit of an extra if you want. Uh, sometimes I will add talon grips, but really with the Gen 4, uh, the texturing is really nice, and so I've just left it as is. I don't add the extra grip width, and of course, that would definitely be according to your hand size. But then when it comes to magazines, which is a very important part, having a little bit of that finger rest just gives you a little extra grip and yet only adds a very little bit to the firearm. When we have a flush fit magazine, it, you just really have a little bit of pinky hanging off, and when you're shooting 10 millimeter especially, it makes it nice to have that little bit of an extra bump right there so i'm a big fan of having that small little lip the guys here with the pierce grip plug i mean it just fills in this cavity this cavity it does have a purpose again about pulling out your magazines but i have really honestly never had that issue and so i just went ahead i like the way that just finishes out but guys, when it comes to magazine options, that's one of the things about Glock that I love. Uh, we have our flush fit 10 rounder. We have the extended pinky 10 rounder. And then this is pierce grip, pierce grip here, which gives me two extra rounds. So I have 12 rounds, not a lot of extension either. So it gives me a little bit more. I almost feel like I'm shooting a full-size firearm, and yet, uh, you know, it's still somewhat concealable. Then we have the standard 15-round magazine, and I really like this sleeve. Of course, the X-Grip sleeve. Uh, you, you don't tend to over-insert, and it's one of the problems with a magazine like this. There's a lot of play. There's a lot of wobble, which could lead to some malfunctions. And so I like adding that to it. And then when I put it up here, it does give me a full grip. If I have just the loose magazine, it just comes in too much. And this is definitely a lot longer, but this would be great for a backup magazine. We appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, this is all made in the USA, and it's very reliable, very accurate stuff. Uh, this is their new boxes, so if you see this, you'll know it is Fioki. Also, uh, we're shooting some different type magazines, which I've been showing. We're just going to test them out. Also, with the SMG mag, we're especially glad to have our Lula loader. <laughs> now, we're going to use one of the full-size G20 15-round magazines, and we have the sleeve on here. Uh, this just helps it to seat better. It keeps it from, you know, over-inserting into the action of the pistol. And it also extends the grip, so you have more gripping surface. It's like shooting a G20 grip with the short slide. And it works. And then we have the 30 rounder from SGM. Now this is definitely a lot longer and of course obviously there's not going to be a sleeve here but it gives you a lot of capability. And I have found that the SGM mags are very reliable. We have shot these in a lot of pistol caliber carbines and uh, they just function. Now we're going to use one of the SGM fun sticks. Uh, this is for your Glock 20 but it can also fit into the 29 and also for pistol caliber carbines. There's a little bit of play in it. We're going to see how it does. Well, it emptied it, but it doesn't lock the slide back. <laughs> That's a lot of 10 millimeter. 
and that's very expensive thanks to Fiocchi. <laughs> The one thing that's pretty cool about 10 millimeter is that the 40 Smith & Wesson is the baby to the 10 millimeter. Uh, and it's the same diameter, typically same bullet diameter as well. And the great thing is it'll fit your 10 millimeter Glock magazines and it will function. And it actually head spaces on the rim so you don't have to worry about it head spacing right here. And it is safe to shoot. Now with a Glock 10 millimeter, you can shoot 40 Smith & Wesson. So we're going to shoot some 40 just to see how it functions. Try it out. Yeah, it's just less recoil, but uh Definitely will work, even in your 10 millimeter magazine. The gun is unloaded. We're gonna just check the trigger action on this Wheaton Arms Elite Pro Trigger. Flat face, I love the geometry. We have a little bit of take up right here. And then we have a nice break. There's a little bit of stacking before we get there. Reset right there. So guys, it is a very crisp, trigger and if you know anything about glocks the triggers are terrible but i have gotten used to those triggers here i have a g20 with a stock trigger got to take up a lot of just a little bit of resistance and then a very mushy break reset right there and we'll check out our trigger pull weight with our lyman trigger gauge from brown ales Three pounds, 4.9 ounces. Three pounds, 4.8 ounces. A very nice trigger. Uh, typically with Glocks, they're about five and a half pounds. Now one light that I'm very fond of, especially with smaller pistols, is the PL Mini 2, or this one actually is the Baldor Mini. Uh, it's a light laser combination. This is a, an adjustable you can see it adjusts to any size, fits to your rail, and it locks solid. We've done a lot of torture tests on these as well. I'm a big fan. Puts out about 600 lumens, and uh, you can charge it right here. And guys, you know I'm a big fan of Olight. There is a link down below. You get 10% off if you use the link and this code SUCH00. But I like other type lights as well. Here is a Surefire, and this is the X300 Ultra. Uh, it's large. Of course, Surefire makes a number of different lights. And so you need to choose what you want for your light. One thing about my home defense pistol is I always have a light on it because you need to be able to identify before you pull that trigger. But guys, when it comes to concealed carry, I have a lot of different options that I like to carry. Uh, this is my Springfield Armory RDP Hellcat. Has the uh, hex wasp on here, which I really like. And uh, this is one of the Tagua holsters. Uh, it's very versatile. I can put my SIG P365, my, a number of different small handguns in this holster, so it's kind of a universal. But it fits very well on the outside. Also, I like the Kimber K6S uh, outside the waistband. I like revolvers that way. They're really close to the body. And so that's another option. Uh, then I have my SIG P365. This is with one of the Armor Guard holsters. Pete over at the Armory Channel made this. He does a great job. Uh, this is very minimal appendix carry inside the waistband. One that I carried for over 10 years was my Glock 26. Uh, this is in one of the Jackson Leatherwork inside the waistband holsters. I really like his work. Uh, John Jackson's a master. And guys, I'm telling you, I was this thing is worn, and it's still really viable. Then I have my Glock 19 MOS with a Trigicon RMR, and then I have an Olite Baldor RL, which is a light laser combination. Uh, I am getting a holster for this from Vetter Holsters. A number of different companies now are making holsters that fit the Olites because they are so popular. And of course, the Stealth Gear holsters, I'm a big fan of those as well. It's kind of a vent core system that I'm putting with this uh, Glock 29. So guys, it's not being stuck with one. Sometimes if you have the means, you know, you can have different setups for different occasions. To be honest, the Glock 29 is a little bit of an overkill, uh, but I do like to take this if I'm going on a hike, if I'm camping. Uh, and of course, sometimes I just like to carry it.
And guys, optics have become more and more popular on self-defense firearms, and there's a lot of advantages to them. One thing I would say is make sure that you train quite a bit before you start to carry one of these. Make sure that you're picking up that dot when you pull it up. Uh, this is the Hex Wasp. This is excellent. Uh, of course, we have the Trijicon RMR. There are a lot of different choices out there, guys. But I uh, just wanted to kind of bring it in that this is something that a lot of people are going to. Me personally, I've been carrying with and without, but uh, getting more and more to carrying with optics. And there are a lot of pistols out there now that are optics ready. Now guys, when it comes to your belt, it's really important to have a good, stable, solid belt on your waist. It is the platform, it is the foundation for your concealed carry. Uh, here we have the Deltec Force Bull Leather Belt. I've been using these for about 10 years. I love them. I'm still wearing one that I had originally. It's so comfortable, and yet it's good and solid. This is a Safari Land uh, gun belt. I was using these back when I was doing a lot of competitive shooting, uh, IPSC combat matches and things, and these are great belts. Then we have the Core Essentials belts. Now, this is more of a dress belt, and I wear this when I'm getting kind of dressed up going out to dinner. And then here's another Core Essentials that has more of your nylon, ballistic nylon, more tactical. What I love about the Core Essentials is you have this ratchet system and it goes all the way down. And when you lock it in, I mean, it just locks. And you can get it as tight as you need to get it. And then, of course, there's a little lever here and you pull it and it just slides right out. Uh, the Core Essentials is an excellent belt system and I highly recommend them. And as far as carrying an extra magazine, uh, I like the Neomag. It's a magnet system. Uh, this thing works fantastic, and it's a really strong magnet. Now, when it comes to the Glock mags, uh, even though there's a metal lining in here, and it does work, actually, it'll, it will work. They do make a version for the Glock with two magnets, so it'll hold up a little better. And, of course, it does have everything to do with the size of your magazine. And you can check out Neomag for more information, but I really like these. But there are a lot of different options out there as well. And carrying an extra magazine is just smart. And guys, whether you carry your gun stock or you add different parts to it, this is just what I like. Again, the options are unlimited. And each of us are different. We carry different things. As you've seen, I carry different things. So guys, what we've shown are just things that I prefer. And again, it's a very personal choice and they're things that you might want to add or not add that I have. But one of the things about it, guys, is I want it to be the optimum. And if I have to pull this in a self-defense situation, God forbid, I want it to be right. And I want every advantage that I can have. Guys, if you depend on a firearm for self-defense, it's really important that you don't go it alone. I've been a member of the USCCA, or the United States Concealed Carry Association, for over four years, and it really gives you peace of mind. The USCCA was founded to help you understand laws and self-defense education. They offer industry-leading training, and to me, one of the most important features is they offer self-defense liability insurance. They have 100% risk-free, money-back, bulletproof guarantee. I'll have an affiliate link down below in the description. And guys, when it comes to a self-defense situation with USCCA, you have a friend. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Also, guys, it's just, also guys, uh, when we have that flush fit 10 round magazine, that's a Glock 26 mag. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. And then we have the 30 rounder from, from who? who is this? With a 29. Uh, mm. uh, as you put it through. Okay. Let's do that again, because that really was awkward. To do any of that. No, no, no. Okay, we're going to talk about that last. Let's talk about that last. 